have been made possible because you watch, you pray, and you support us so generously. But all this good news is not the full story. Television production requires creative, technical, and financial resources. Sometimes the challenges of making ends meet seem overwhelming. When many disciples abandoned Jesus, our Lord asked Peter if he too would go. St. Peter replied, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This truth is why we're here, to help share the life-giving word, Christ himself with all the world. Shalom World continues its mission because the Holy Spirit inspires us, sustains especially those tuning in through Luminous Radio and Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea or through the other local radio stations making this broadcast possible and the many more of you joining us through other digital platforms. I'm Sister Bernadette and here with me in the studio this evening is Father Philip and together we will provide the English language translations for this evening's liturgy. At the end of the service this evening, we will be singing the Te Deum. It's long been a custom in Catholic churches all over the world to sing this great song of thanksgiving at the end of the year on New Year's Eve, thanking God for all the good things that have happened in the course of the previous year and asking for his blessing for the year ahead. We do that on New Year's Day when we sing the Veni Creator Spiritus. session is entering the Basilica, Cardinal Rhea will be leading us in evening prayer and in the singing of the Te Deum. In former years this ceremony often used to take place at the church in Rome known as the Jesu, the mother church of the Jesuit order, but in recent years it's been celebrated here at St. Peter's. And evening prayer will be the first Vespers of the Feast of Mary, Mother of God, the feast that is celebrated on the 1st of January each year. We see here the statue of baby Jesus enthroned here on Christmas Eve by Pope Francis. Now being incensed, reminding us that in every liturgy that we celebrate, Christ himself is the main celebrant and we are all united in him, giving praise to the Father in particular this evening for Mary, his mother and our mother. venerates the altar and makes his way towards the presidential chair underneath the great image of Bernini's chair of Peter. And we prepare ourselves now to enter into the Liturgy of Vespers. 
O Dio, vieni a salvarmi. Signore, vieni presto il mio aiuto. Gloria al Padre, al Figlio e allo Spirito Santo. Come era nel principio, ora e sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. Alleluia. Our opening hymn this evening is the Ave Maria Stella, a plain song vespers hymn from about the 8th century. We now enter into the psalmody, which consists of two psalms and a canticle, a, a New Testament canticle. The first psalm, Psalm 113. the antiphon to the first psalm, a marvelous exchange. Man's creator has become man, born of a virgin. We have been made sharers in the divinity of Christ, 
who humbled himself to share in our humanity. O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forever from the rising of the sun to its setting. Praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from his misery he raises the poor to set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. To the childless wife he gives a home and gladdens her heart with children. to the second psalm, which is Psalm 147, the choir is singing the antiphon. By your miraculous birth of the Virgin, you have fulfilled the scriptures. Like a gentle rain falling upon the earth, you have come down to save your people. God, we praise you. Praise the Lord Jerusalem, Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He established peace on your borders 
he feeds you with finest wheat. sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He hurls down hailstones like crumbs. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it melts them. At the breath of his mouth, the waters flow. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Introducing the canticle from the first chapter of Ephesians with the antiphon, Your blessed and fruitful virginity is like the bush flaming yet unburned, which Moses saw on Sinai. the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. Amen. 
His blood we have been redeemed, and our sins forgiven, so immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ. plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him in the heavens and on earth. It is time for a short reading from Scripture, from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Quando venne la pienezza del tempo, Dio mandò il suo figlio, nato da donna, nato sotto la legge. When the designated time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman born under the law, to deliver from the law those who were subjected to it, so that we might receive our status adopted sons. Cardinal Battista Rey, who is presiding over this liturgy, will now provide a short homily. Do lettura del testo che il Santo Padre Papa Francesco aveva preparato per questa circostanza. I will now read the text which His Holiness Pope Carissimi Francis had prepared for this occasion. Dear brothers and sisters, this evening's celebration always has a twofold aspect. Liturgically, we enter into the solemn feast of Mary Most Holy, the Mother of God. And at the same time, we conclude the year with the great hymn of praise. Che parlerà nell'omelia di domani mattina. We will speak about this first aspect in tomorrow morning's homily. But now we give space for giving thanks for the year that is drawing to a close. Te Deum laudamus. Noi ti lodiamo, Dio. We praise you, O God. Ti proclamiamo, Signore. We acclaim you as Lord. 
This could seem to be forced, almost jarring to thank God at the end of a year like this, marked by the pandemic. We think of the families who've lost one or more members, of those who've been ill, of those who've suffered from loneliness, of those who've lost their jobs. A volte qualcuno domanda qual è il senso di un dramma come questo. Sometimes people ask, what meaning does a tragedy like this have? We don't need to give a hasty response to this question. Nemmeno Dio risponde facendo ricorso a ragioni superiori. To our most anguished why questions, not even God answers by having recourse to higher reason. God's response takes the path of the Incarnation, as we'll hear in a moment in the Magnificat Antiphon. In his great love for us, God sent his Son in the likeness of our sinful nature. Un Dio che sacrificasse gli esseri umani per un grande disegno fosse pure il migliore. A God who would sacrifice human beings for his grand design, even the best possible design, is certainly not the God that Jesus Christ revealed to us. God is Father, the eternal Father. And if his Son became man, it is because of the immense compassion of the Father's heart. God is a father and a shepherd. And what shepherd would give up even a single sheep for lost, thinking that at least he still has many others? No, this cynical and ruthless God does not exist. This is not the God that we praise and acclaim as Lord. When the good Samaritan met that poor, half-dead man on the side of the road, he didn't give him a speech explaining to him the meaning of what had happened to him or even trying to convince him that in the end it was for his own good. No, the Samaritan moved with compassion, bent over that stranger, treating him like a brother, and he cared for him, doing everything in his power. Here, perhaps, we can find the meaning of this tragedy, of this pandemic, as well as other scourges that afflict humanity, triggering compassion in us and prompting attitudes and gestures of closeness, of care, of solidarity of affection. This is what has happened and is happening even in Rome in these months. And it is above all for this that we give thanks to God this evening. We thank God for the good things that have happened in our cities during the lockdown. And, in general, during the pandemic, which, unfortunately, is not yet over. There are many people who, without making a noise, have tried to make the weight of this trial more bearable. With their daily dedication, inspired by love for their neighbor, they have made real the words of the Te Deum, day by day we praise you. 
We acclaim you now and to all eternity. For the blessing and praise that the Lord loves the most is love of neighbor. The healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, and volunteers found themselves on the front lines. In modo particolare nelle nostre preghiere. And so they were always in our prayers. And they deserve our gratitude. Come pure tanti sacerdoti, as do many priests and men and women religious. Che si sono prologati con generosità e dedizione. These people who spent themselves generously and with great dedication. But this evening, our thanks go to all those who strive every day to carry on their service to their own families and we think of those who serve the common good. We think especially of school administrators and teachers who carry out an essential role in the life of society and who must face a very complex situation. We think with gratitude of public administrators who know how to value all the resources present in their cities and territories who are detached from their own private interests as well as those of their parties because they truly seek the good of everyone, the common good beginning with the good of the most disadvantaged. None of this can happen without grace, without God's mercy. We know well by experience, in difficult moments, we're inclined to defend ourselves. This is natural. We're inclined to protect ourselves and our own dear ones, to safeguard our own interests. So how is it that so many people, without any other reward than that of doing good, somehow find the strength to be concerned for others? What drives them to give up something of themselves, of their own comfort, their own time, their own good? in order to give to others. In the end, even if they themselves don't realize it, what fortifies them is God's strength, which is more powerful than our selfishness. We praise Him for this this evening, because we believe and we know that all the good that is accomplished day after day on earth, in the end, comes from Him, from God. And looking toward the future that awaits us, we beg Him once again, may Your mercy always be with us, Lord for we have hoped in you. Our trust is in you. Our hope is in you. Cardinal Battista Rey concludes the, the words prepared as we heard by Pope Francis, and it was announced today that he would not be taking part in this Vespers service due to painful sciatica, which we know he suffers from. Also present here, we've been seeing off and on the mayor of the city of Rome, Virginia Raji. Very few people taking part in this Vespers service this evening the cardinals and 
bishops making up the curia here on the altar, and about a hundred people in the pews in front of the altar of the chair. Chanting the responsory, the word was made man. He lived among us. come to the chanting of the Magnificat, beginning with the antiphon. In his great love for us, God sent his Son in the likeness of our sinful nature. Born of a woman and subject to the law, Hallelujah. And Cardinal Re and all the assisting cardinals in the congregation stand now for this great hymn of praise. The Gospel Canticle. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Now Cardinal Ray prepares to incense the altar at the central moment of the celebration of evening prayer, giving honor to the altar on which the Eucharist is celebrated. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. And now the deacon incenses Cardinal Ray, who is presiding over this celebration. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. 
deacon prepares to incense the assembly the people of God gathered for this act of thanksgiving and worship. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. us in the intercessions. Invochiamo il Cristo nostra pace che è venuto a unire in un solo popolo gli uomini di Let us invoke Christ our peace who came to unite in one sole people men and women of every tongue and nation. Dona a tutti la tua pace Signore. Lord grant your peace to all. When you were born, you showed your kindness and gentleness. Help us always to be grateful for all your blessings. You made Mary, your mother, full of grace. Give all people the fullness of grace. You came to announce God's good news to the world. Increase the number of preachers and hearers of your word. You wish to become our brother by being born of the Virgin Mary. Teach men and women to love each other in mutual brotherhood. You came as the sun rising over the earth. Show the light of your countenance to those who have died. Con 
We conclude our prayer this evening asking that the kingdom of God may come. And now we sing the Our Father in Latin. Preghiamo, O Dio, che nella verginità feconda di Maria hai donato... O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Vespers now concludes. We prepare ourselves for exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The choir will chant the hymn Ave Verum Corpus, dating from the 14th century and attributed to Pope Innocent the sixth that was often sung during the Middle Ages at the elevation of the Eucharist during the consecration at Holy Mass and was also used frequently during benediction of the Most Blessed Sacrament. This hymn helps us remember Jesus' real presence here in the Blessed Sacrament, but it also ties Jesus' presence here to the redemptive meaning of suffering in the life of all believers, a very appropriate connection at this moment in which many are suffering in our world today. in adoration, the choir leads us in this beautiful prayer, Hail True Body, born of Mary the Virgin. Truly suffered upon the cross for us, from whose pierced side there flowed water and blood. taste for us in the trials of death. O oh, sweet Jesus, O oh, good Jesus, O oh, Jesus, Son of Mary,
as we enter into this most precious time in which we too, wherever we are, can adore our Lord truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, present in our hearts. We allow ourselves to hear him once again. This moment reminds us of the very solemn moment of prayer at the end of Lent when the Holy Father gave benediction after a period of adoration in front of an empty St. Peter's Square. What a wonderful image that was, a profound image of the Holy Father leading the world in prayer at this time of crisis, trusting in God's mercy for all of us, knowing that his Son Jesus shared our suffering and leads us through his own conquest of suffering to life. During the homily we heard reference to the parable of the Good Samaritan, a parable that is particularly dear to our Holy Father, Pope Francis. So let us listen now to these words from the Gospel according to St. Luke. There was a lawyer who, to disconcert Jesus, stood up and said to him, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You have answered right, said Jesus. Do this, and life is yours. And now the singing of the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. Everlasting Father, all the world bows down before you. sing your praise, the hosts of heaven and all the angelic powers. All the cherubim and seraphim call out to you in an, unsen an unending song, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of angel hosts.
heavens and the earth are filled with your majesty and glory. band of apostles, the noble company of prophets, the white-robed army who shed their blood for Christ, all sing your praise and to the ends of the earth, your holy church proclaims her faith in you. Father, whose majesty is boundless, your true and only Son, who is to be adored, the Holy Spirit, sent to be our advocate. You, Christ, are the King of glory, Son of the Eternal Father. When you took our nature to save mankind, you did not shrink from birth in the virgin's womb. You overcame the power of death. opening the Father's kingdom to all who believe in you. Enthroned at God's right hand in the glory of the Father, come in judgment according to your promise. redeemed your people by your precious blood. Come, we implore you to our aid. Grant us with the saints a place in eternal glory. Lord, send us 
save your people and bless your inheritance. Rule them and uphold them forever and ever. Day by day we praise you. We acclaim you now and to all eternity. In your goodness, Lord, keep us free from sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Mercy always be with us, Lord. For we have hoped in you. In you, Lord, we put our trust. shall not be put to shame. And now we can join in singing, if we would like, wherever we are, the beautiful hymn commonly sung for benediction the Tantum Ergo. Cardinal Ray incenses the Blessed Sacrament exposed upon the altar. from the hymn to the everlasting Father and the Son who reigns on high and with the Holy Spirit too be salvation, honor, blessing, might and endless majesty. Lord Jesus Christ, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign forever and ever. As Cardinal Ray is vested with the humeral veil, we prepare ourselves now for 
this most precious moment in which we too will receive the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ truly present body and blood soul and divinity here in the most blessed sacrament and as we accept his blessing we also offer up to him all of the people that we wish him to bless As we see the presider and those ministering venerate physically our Lord perhaps we too may want to express some sort of physical gesture allowing ourselves to remember that we too are temples in which our Lord is present and now the divine praises Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. And now as the deacon prepares to repose the blessed sacrament in the tabernacle, the choir chants the shortest psalm in the Psalter, Psalm 116, a great song of praise. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all peoples. For his mercy endures forever, and the truth of the Lord lasts through all eternity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen.
final hymn, as usual, in the Vespers service to Our Lady with the Marian Antiphon, the Alma Redemptoris Mater. Loving Mother of our Redeemer, Gate of Heaven, Star of the Sea, hasten to aid thy fallen people who strive to rise once more. Thou who brought forth thy holy Creator, all creation wondering, yet remainest ever virgin, taking from Gabriel's lips that joyful hail, be merciful to us sinners. Cardinal Battista Rey now greeting the Mayor of Rome, Virginia Raji, here. As he proceeds with the procession into the sacristy. is coming to us from St. Peter's Basilica. We bring to a close this live broadcast, this worldwide telecast of the celebration of evening prayer, or first Vespers, in which we've also been blessed to adore our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and receive benediction along with the great hymn, the Te Deum, presided over by Cardinal Battista Rey on the eve of the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. We will be back again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Rome time when Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Secretary of State, will preside over Holy Mass on the Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. I invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts for a summary of this evening's liturgy, as well as other coverage of Vatican and world news. So, from Sister Bernadette and myself, and on behalf of everyone at Vatican Media, a blessed New Year's Eve to you all. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. for life-changing entertainment? Does what you see on most channels leave you feeling unfulfilled? Well, look no further. Shalom World TV brings the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to you, whether at home or on the go. To start watching, you don't need antennas, cable connections, or a dish. You probably already have what you need, if you have a smart TV, such as a Samsung, LG, or Panasonic, or if you have one with an Android, Opera, or Roku TV operating system. These can be found on the latest models of Sony, Toshiba, Vizio, 
Philips, RCA, Sharp Aquos, TCL, Insignia, Element, Hitachi, Vestal, Skyworth, Chang Hong, Konka, and Hisense. You can also watch Shalom TV on most IPTV streaming devices, starting with the fourth generation of Apple TV and Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Mi Box, Amino, Humax, or on TiVo Box through the Opera TV store. Are you a gamer or virtual reality enthusiast? We've got you covered. Shalom World is on Xbox One, Razer Forge, Nvidia Shield, and HoloLens. To start watching, all you have to do is go to the App Store, download Shalom World, and start being fulfilled by content that brings you into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. For more information on how to watch Shalom World on your TVs and devices, visit us at shalomworld.org slash connected TV. Have a smartphone or tablet? Take Shalom with you wherever you go. Again, by downloading Shalom World from the App Store. If you prefer to watch from your Mac or PC, get the Shalom World desktop app. Or you can always watch from our website, shalomworld.org. And guess what? Shalom World is absolutely free on all of these platforms. Yes, free. There are no download charges and no in-store app purchases required, ever. If you're looking for life-changing entertainment, you found it. It's here, waiting for you on your Shalom World.